with that one. So that's going to be put away for seven days to fully cure. In the meantime, we're going to deal with some photo etch. So for a first today for me, we're going to solder photo etch. So uh, we've got my Weller uh, adjustable photo etch, uh, photo etch, my Weller adjustable soldering iron. We've got some low temp solder and some sapphire flux. So you could say glue this together. But it's a bit of a nightmare doing that. I think soldering is the way to go. It's nice thick brass PE. So it's going to be quite forgiving to solder. Um, I'm going to set the solder at about 140 degrees centigrade. And we're going to clean up all the parts. Check how they fit together. And then we're going to load our tip up with some low melt solder. Clean it off. And then we're going to assemble the photo etch roughly where we want it. So I've got one piece on the mat held with a bit of white tack. I'm going to offer the other piece right up to it to a butt up. Just to check the fit. We're going to get some flux on a brush. There we go. We're going to put it together. Apply the flux. There we go. Plenty of flux. Then get our iron. And just very quickly run it across the photo etch. Really does work quick. There we go. Let go. Let it dry or cool rather for a few seconds. And there we go. Job done. Nice and easy. Trouble free. And a stronger joint than gluing it alone. So there we go. There's one piece done. We've got four more to do. Um, the opposite side. Two lower pieces. Um, and the spoiler support and the spoiler wing ends so where we sold it it's fully dry now or, or cooled rather we're going to hit it with our file sand back the upper or any raised areas of solder and then we'll hit it with a ump sponge to even it all out so we've got a nice even surface ready for primer so really easy to do nice and simple having the right tools at hand is a massive game changer that low melt solder and the sapphire flux Combined with a well uh, adjustable soldering iron, makes this a piece of cake to do. Um, like I say, we've got a UMP sol uh, sander just to give it a final sand back and just give us a nice even finish everywhere. So, not quite a nice strong joint there. Like I say, I think it's more reliable than gluing. I think it, uh, it allows a bit more strength. And I'll be honest, I think it's easier because you can unsolder this really easily. Uh, and reposition, clean up if needed, reposition, resolder nice and easily. And there we go. Now, onto the spoiler supports. So we clamped them together in a bulldog clip and we flux them exactly as before. It's two identical pieces of photo etch. We just want to solder them together. So we're going along right along the edge. Uh, once we've done the majority, we'll let it cool, flip it round, and get the other end. There's no heat in that brass whatsoever. Hit it with the flux again. And get the solder, a little bit of solder on the iron. And then just touch it and run it round. And there we go. There's one of the spoiler supports done. We'll do the rest of those. There's the other one. And at the bottom, there's a little mount as well. A little 90 degree angle. So we're just holding this with tweezers. And we're just going to apply the solder and the flux as before. A little bit of heat. And then we'll spin it round and get the back end. So... Yeah, nice and easy to do. Like I say, I think it's easier. In some respects, it's not, because obviously you've got to have the soldering iron out, yada, yada, yada. But I think it's definitely a more reliable joint. Uh, the wing tips off the end of the wing, funnily enough. Uh, again, two-part. One's going to recess part where the wing sits in. Uh, we're just going to run some solder right around the edge, and then we'll sand it smooth later on. I'm just checking the fitment on the resin part of the spoiler, and it fits in absolutely perfect. And here we go. All the parts soldered up and mounted on some reverse Tamiya tape. And we've got some Pro Scale Photo Etch Primer now. Give it a couple of coats of primer in preparation for paint. So, yeah, first time ever thing for me. I don't think I've ever soldered Photo Etch before. Definitely won't be the last. Um, with it being brass, I think it was relatively easy to do. What steel will be like? I don't know. Can you solder steel? You must be able to. Must be able to. Um, a normal uh, photo etch, I think, yeah, you've got to watch the heat in the part. There we go. They are what a HPC 
doing a great job. The ProScale Photo Edge Primer, nice and thin, easy to spray, pre-thinned in the bottle, and doesn't clock up any of the surface detail at all, and gives us a nice acid-etched primer onto the brass. So that can be allowed to dry, and then we'll hit it up some colour. Spoiler, again, we've got some photo etch part glued underneath. And these are all going to be primed in Mr. Surface of 1500 Black. All the parts I've got here are going to be carbon fibred, so we're just going to Mr. Surface them. And the reason we're doing that is just in case we've got a slight split in the carbon, it's not going to be completely apparent that it's there. The black can cover up some kind of imperfections if needed. And I think it's better to have a bit of primer down than just doing it on bare resin. So a couple of coats on each part. This surface is a nice, reliable primer. Works really, really well. And same on the front splitter as well. It's a big front splitter, this one. It's a bit of a big one. It looks a bit odd. But, yeah, no problem at all. Uh, like I say, we've got carbon for all these. Everything's got carbon pre cut for it except the rear uh, bumper insert, which I think is crazy. So I have to use my own on that, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This piece here, there's no pre-cut carbon for this bit. It's the only bit of trim on the car there's no carbon for, which is a little bit mad. But hey-ho, it is what it is. There we go. A couple of coats of primer on everything. We'll let that dry. And then on our photo edge parts, we're going to hit it up with some Mr. Surfacer as well. A couple of coats on that. Covers really quickly over the photo edge primer. And there we go. Just checking everything. Coverage is looking good. There we go. Right, the rest of the photo edge parts we're going to cut off and mount up again, ready for priming. So I've literally got a little stainless steel tub or pot, and I'm cutting off all the parts I want uh, into here, and then we'll process them, clean them all up, get them mounted, and get them sprayed. So some things aren't going to be painted. Brake discs aren't going to be painted. We're just going to scuff those up because they're going to be steel discs on this. Uh, the radiator intercoolers, etc., oil cooler, those parts will be left clear. We'll just give those, well, just plain uh, photo etch. We'll give them a wash later on. But our Zoran shears here working absolutely fantastic. I must have had these for 10 years now, maybe uh, 9, 10 years. And yeah, they're still absolutely immense. Window wipers, yes, I know some of you have a fetish for window wipers. Mr. Hartford, I'm referring to you. Um, I didn't show the full build them. You've seen these plenty of times. If you're a patron, there's a standalone video on my patron showing how these are built. But literally, a bit of Ben PE, following that very loose pitcher instruction that comes with the kits, and then get the little mount on the end, and then the blade fits in between the mouth mount. These are a little bit fiddly compared to some of the others out there, but with a little bit of super glue on there and a steady hand, they're relatively simple to do. We've got all the resin parts all cleaned up and mantle ready for primer. Again, we're hitting them with Mr. Service of 1500 Black. A couple of coats over the resin. Works absolutely beautiful. Don't try and flood the resin. It does not like it. You'll end up with separated fish-eyed paint. Just take your time. Build it up nice and slow. Uh, I'm painting the wheels black here, mistakenly, uh, because these are going to be red. Um, so I don't think I confirmed at the time or kind of decided what colour was doing them. So we're just painting them in black, but we're going to reprime these in pink in a little bit. So lots of parts to do, including these beautiful wheels. Which look absolutely fantastic. So very light coats all around the spokes, all around the inside edge of the wheel, the back of the wheel, and then on the outer edge, just where the tyre sits so there's no bare resin shown, because it's probably one of the worst things you can have showing. And wheels, I often do three or four very light coats, just building it up, just making sure we get into all those nooks and crannies. Now, wheel colour, again, I hadn't decided at this point, but we are going to actually go with gold. Um, I think gold will look nice on the red. I think it'd be a nice... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It'd be a nice um, combination, is the word. Uh, that with the carbon bits. Like I say, loads of carbon bits, including a carbon bonnet or hood. Uh, which I opted not to use, but nothing for that rear bit of trim, which I think is a little bit crazy because if this was my car and I carboned everything, that rear bit of trim would be carboned as well. But anyway, so hobby design decals, these are normally no problem 
whatsoever. It's alpha model, basically hover design. Um, nice carbon trim, already pre-cut, so there should be a breeze to fit these. So we're just cutting off all the little numbers, and then we'll pop them in our room temperature water, and then offer it up. Now, some of these parts are tricky. The spoiler's not too bad. But some of the smaller parts were a little bit of a nightmare because they're quite difficult to handle. So it's standard decal procedure in the water. Get it out, get it on the park, get all the moisture out from behind it. Um, brush it down, burst down with a cotton bud to get rid of all the moisture from behind it. Then hit it with some uh, UMP decal solutions. And then hit it with some heat to get it finally set in place. Now the top piece overlaps and folds under a bit so I will put the top piece on last so that when you put the um, bottom piece on it kind of butts up to it rather than covering it. Um, well the other way around so it actually covers it rather than button up to it and it should reduce that noticeable ridge. So the pre cut carbon like I say absolute godsend. Uh, get it on. We do have those photo etched parts underneath we added earlier so we're going to need a little bit of heat to try and get it to conform around these. The little heat gun here from Amazon, absolutely invaluable tool. It works absolutely fantastic. So don't go too mad because the heat will bend the resin as well. So keep it moving. Don't hold it there for too long and keep moving it around. Once you've got it set in place, grab your decal brush, UMP normal solution here. I'm just going to brush some decal solutions on, which will help soften the decal and get it conformed around all those areas and set in place. So a little bit tricky this one because of those photo etched parts. Um, I also kind of found that it didn't line up great at the end either. Um, I'm going to guess it was operator error by me, uh, but it just doesn't seem to sit straight at all. It was as if they were on a funny angle. It was at a funny angle. Um, so, yeah, kind of fruitless putting these on, but they're under there. Uh, to be honest, it might have well been better going over the top of the carbon. But in hindsight, well, everything looks great in hindsight, doesn't it? Um, yes. Anyway, UMP decal solution is softening this up nicely. We get a bit more heat on it and get all the edges folded over and conformed. There we go. Finger tool. Absolutely valuable tool, the old finger. For folding over decals, it works great. I'm just burnishing out any fluid from behind the decal, any air. There we go, and then get the edges, and there we go. There's the bottom part of the spoiler done. Then we can grab uh, the top, get the top on in a bit. Uh, but now we're going to do a front splitter. So again, pre-cut, pre-shaped. Uh, again, a little bit tricky to do. Just take your time. Keep the decal wet until you get it set in place. So meanwhile, while we're doing some of the carboning, we're over at the spray booth. And we're getting some grey black uh, leather down from ProScale. Now, in my experience, a lot of Japanese cars have quite dull interiors. I'm sorry if you're a big Japanese fan. But by comparison, they are pretty dull. And they always seem to be grey. So I've chosen a nice grey interior colour for this. So it's ProScale Paints grey black leather. And I think it is the perfect colour for this car. So we're going to combine that with ProScale Anthracite Flocking. And that will give us a good uh, colour combination in the uh, interior so just like coats over everything we're over black primer the black gray leather does cover really quickly there we go nice and thin coats i want a hpc h um at about is it hpc h or hpc i can never remember this is a plus or a h anyway it's now what a hpc uh, at about 18 psi and we're just spraying nice, light, thin coats down on everything. LP5, semi-gloss black now. All the running gear parts are going to go in this. Um, so, yes, everything getting painted up. Wheels, uh, sorry, wheels. Seats I decided to do in red. So, I've gone with red seats. It was an idea from one of the guys in the hangout. I can't remember if it was Aaron or Brandon. I forget who it was now. Sorry if I got your name wrong. So, yeah, we're going for red. So, we're going to prime these in pink over the black. Uh, Tamiya Pring Primer covers really quickly, so not an issue at all. There we go. Put this one side to dry for a few hours. There we go. And then on the discs, we've got some Pro Scale paints. Um, I think this is titanium silver, if I remember right. 
and we do have photo etch to go over the top so we're only really doing it to get the edges um, so it doesn't show black through the um, photo etch discs so a couple of coats of this on here as you see the coverage is absolutely phenomenal don't forget to get the backs too I love the way alpha models and hobby design mount all their parts it makes life so much easier for spraying than the exhaust we're going for again stainless sorry not stainless um, titanium silver on the exhaust it's got a nice goldish hint to it and we're also going to heat stain these as well to give them a bit of weathering so a couple of coats of this our metallics cover absolutely beautiful really nice deep finely pigmented colors and the wheels we're going for antique gold uh, now a few of the guys out there have used these on these cars lately uh, Dan Perrin being one used them on his Ferrari SF90 Spider, and yeah it's a beautiful colour so I thought you know what I want nice gold wheels on these this is the perfect colour like I say beautiful gold colours very finely pigmented from our sales of Pro Scale so you don't get any massive pigments of metallic in there and just a few light coats again making sure it's getting all in and out between the spokes all around the edge of the rim and underneath inside as well to make sure it's all covered and we're not getting any black showing through anywhere. So just take your time. We'll probably put about three coats on this, just nice and slow. Build it up nice and slow. 18 PSI of an Iwata Revolution CR3. And then the seats. Now, I was looking around for a seat colour. And I opened my drawer where I keep all my kind of readily used Pro Scale paints. The rest of them are on a paint rack. Some of them are in a drawer. And this was Brembo. Well, it's actually Caliper Red colour. I thought, you know what, it's a nice deep red, it's perfect for this. So a few coats of that on the seats and they're done. And then we're going to spray the centre of the hubs in this surface of 1500. So we've got an artist circle template which fits the hub absolutely perfect in the centre while leaving the rest of the disc covered. And this will perfectly uh, spray the centre hub for us nice and quickly and with ease. And there we go. So we're going to leave that video today. We'll be back for part two very, very soon. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to check out my Patreon down below. And there's links to ProScale Paints there as well. Thank you all. I'll catch you all next time. And 